Hi, my name is Joseph Jankowski, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a projectile motion function I developed in MATLAB for a programming class at Oregon Institute of Technology. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is load the help documentation. And the function is called projectile motion. These are the inputs. We have the initial launch velocity, the initial angle, the number of points to plot, the x position, and the height. Uh, and then it returns these uh, vectors that we'll discuss how to use later. Uh, the rest of the documentation um, shows an example. Uh, it gets more into the inner workings of the function, uh, explains how to plot multiple tra trajectories on the same figure and it also explains more about how to use the output data. So before I get into the examples, I just want to briefly describe the code. After the help documentation, we get into the error handling. Um, this just limits the maximum range of the function. Um, it has a pretty wide range, uh, up to about 2,000 meters per second and uh, 10,000 meters for our initial conditions. So it's uh, in 0 to 90 degrees. It's pretty wide. Uh, the next thing we get into is this if else statement. This is very important because it scales the sample period based on the input conditions so we don't get um, way too many calculations or way too and lose too little and lose accuracy. Uh, and this function has actually, it, it takes a lot more samples than it shows in the plot, so your um, output vectors are pretty accurate. Uh, next, uh, we just make some initial calculations, and then we get into the meat of this function, which is this while loop. How it works is it uh, integrates velocity data um, in order to calculate uh, positions along this time vector. And it just stops and exits the loop when the y position equals zero. So when the projectile hits the ground, it stops. And then it dumps everything into arrays, uh, and it finds some useful values and outputs them in a table for the user to see. And finally, it plots the figure. It plots the figure as an animation, so you can see the trajectory. Um, and and then it marks some critical points on this trajectory. So let's see this function in action. I'm going to clear this and load up a basic example. I'll call the function with a velocity of 20 meters per second, an angle of 60 degrees. Um, I'll say 25 data points, initial position of 0, and a height of 4 meters. Let's see what it does. So here's our plot. You can see that the initial position is marked in yellow, the maximum height is marked in red, and the other important thing to note here is that the axes are scaled to be equal and scaled to the maximum dimension, plus 10%. And this is important because this uh, makes sure that this angle is always an actual representation of this trajectory and that the arc is uh, represents reality. Um, to give an example of this, we'll use a really steep angle. You can do, let's say, 88 degrees. And you can see that the trajectory is very steep now. And we'll do a really shallow angle, angle 20 degrees. And we can see that it's a very shallow trajectory now. And um, we have to close this plot out every time, or it'll plot again the same window, which is actually very useful. We'll find later. Other than the plot, you also get this table, which shows all this useful data at a glance. Um, the final x position, the distance traveled, the height of the arc, rise above the start position, final velocity, final angle, etc., etc. All the useful data you want to know right away. Um, so let's see some more extreme examples of what this function can do. Let's say we just want to launch a ball like straight up in the air. So we can do that. We can say 90 degrees and uh, start at zero for the height and we just launched a ball straight up in the air and it fell back to the ground so we can see that it uh, took eight seconds approximately for it to 
we want to jump and fall back to the ground. Let's say we don't want to launch a ball straight up, but let's say we want to drop a ball. We can do that too. Let's say the velocity is zero. Angle doesn't matter. And if we just enter this like this, we'll get an error message. One of the uh, error messages that says that you have to have a height of velocity zero. So we'll enter a height of 100 meters. And let's see what that does. And we get a ball drop. See the ball starts at 100 meters, drops to the ground, and we get our data out for the ball drop. Pretty cool. Uh, let's say we don't want to drop it directly to the ground, but let's say we want to just like roll it slowly off of a table or a ledge. So we're going to say 0.3 meters per second. We can get down to pretty small val values, and this is still really accurate. And say 0 degrees now, it's just going to roll right off the table. Let's add some more data points just for the heck of it. We do 60 data points and start at zero for the X position and the ledge is two meters high. Let's see what that does. Close this, run it, and you can see the ball dropping off the ledge and hitting the ground. Pretty cool stuff. So for one last example here of the basic functions, I'll show um, the extremes we can go to. Let's say we want to go to, um, we're going to launch the ball 200 meters per second, and we're going to launch it off a mountain this time. So we're going to say 40 degrees, and we'll say the mountain is uh, 2,000 meters high. So now we get some much larger dimensions. We can see that the distance is um, almost 6,000 meters, and it still gives us a nice accurate plot. We can even go further than that. We can put this all up to 2,000 meters per second, which is the maximum velocity that we can plot. And we can see that the ball projectile goes all the way to like 40 kilometers. So it's pretty flexible. You can get some pretty extreme distances out of this and heights and um, yeah, push it pretty far. So that's the basics of this function. Uh, if we don't want to show any data at all, we can still get our output information without a plot um, by just putting zero in for the number of points. Um, we can get all our output vectors. We can get our data table, but it won't plot it, which is very useful. Um, let's say we want to do multiple plots in the same figure, though. We can also do that, which I'll show you. So this code here is just copied directly from the help documentation. This is all described in there um, very thoroughly. And what we're doing is we're just initiating, initiating a loop uh, for 10 iterations. Um, we're changing the angle from 20 degrees to 80 degrees as the loop progresses. And then we're scaling the graph to the maximum output uh, dimension, which we're getting from this dimension value from the output vectors. And I'll show you how this works. So, as you can see, uh, we get an increase in angle for each plot from tw uh, 20 degrees to 80 degrees. And as these continue to plot, we'll see they go outside of the dimensions of the plot. And you don't have to predict what your last plot is, you can just use this code and it'll snap to the uh, full dimensions and show all of the plots uh, after the final plot. So that's pretty useful. You don't have to use this to do show changes in angles. You can do changes of start position, changes of velocity, and pull out multiple plots showing all kinds of different parameters. Uh, very powerful stuff. Very useful. So uh, now for the last uh, little bit of this demonstration, I want to show how we can use some of the um, output information of this function to do some really useful stuff. So I'm just going to copy and paste this from the code here for convenience. So we're now outputting all these vectors here from the projectile function. So let's plot this. And let's say we want to know what's happening at some time during this trajectory. Um, the maximum time is about 4.1 millisecond, uh, 4.1 seconds. So let's say we want to know what's happening at uh, at 6 
seconds into this function, or not six, excuse me, at about uh, three seconds into this function. So this is really easy to do because we get our sample period output here, and it's always a factor of 10, so it's really easy to make calculations of indexes uh, when you're working with time. Um, since it's one millisecond a sample period, we know that three seconds into the uh, um, trajectory is at an index of 3,000. So you can just say x 3,000 and we get 103 meters which is right about here where it should be. And we can also find the velocity at that point. So the velocity is 35.89 meters per second. We can find the angle which is negative 15 degrees and we can find the height if we want. But I'm going to show you something else we can do with this data. Um, let's say we uh, don't know the time in this trajectory, uh, but we know a position and we want to find a change in height from the initial position. Like my favorite example is a bullet. So let's say we're using the function to simulate the firing of a bullet. So the bullet's going to travel at 1200 meters per second. It's going to be fired at an angle of zero degrees. Uh, we'll do 30 data points and 1.5 meters height. So that's like about what a bullet simulation should look like. And you can see it's all along the x direction because we get very little change in height, but it, the bullet travels um, over a half of a kilometer. And we want to know, let's say, what happens at 200 meters into this function. So we want to know how far the bullet drops from the initial position um, at 200 meters. So we can do that using a find function here. And we don't know a, an integer value for x, but we can find the index by saying we want to know the index when x is less than 201 and x is greater than 199 and we get a uh, range of values. We'll take the middle one. So x at the index 1668 should be around 200 meters, and it is. So that's good. So now we want to know uh, the height change at that point. So we can say y, our initial height, y of 1, is y at that index. And we get 13.6 centimeters which means that this ball dropped 13.6 centimeters from the initial height by the time it reaches 200 meters. So if we fired this bullet at a target at 200 meters, it would miss it by 13.6 centimeters. Pretty cool stuff. There's a lot of powerful things you can do using all the output data from in these arrays. And um, this function is pretty flexible. Um, it doesn't take into account wind resistance or anything, but as far as um, calculating trajectories just based on uh, um, accelerations and velocities and um, uh, different heights and star positions. It's uh, pretty powerful stuff. Pretty flexible. It's well documented. Um, has error handling. And um, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and um, I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching.